Hey everybody, Skyler here, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the differences between gold, fiat currency, and Bitcoin. Uh, especially this time where the United States has been printing trillions of dollars, a lot of people are trying to figure out where to put their money and and try to make it where they, their money doesn't lose value over time. So I want to talk about the differences between those three, but before I end up doing that, I just want to let you know, if you are brand new to this video, this is the first video you've watched of mine, my channel is uh, pointed to people that are new to this space, um, and my channel goes straight to charity. So if you're new to this space, my channel is pointed to helping you out. So liking and subscribing absolutely isn't a bad idea, and because it goes to charity, it really um, helps out a lot. So I super appreciate everyone who already has liked and subscribed. Uh, but on that note, if you write any comments down below, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll write, uh, answer any questions in the comment section down below. And then I also do live streams every single Sunday at 11 a.m. So if you um, want to ask me any questions live, come on my stream 11 a.m. Mountain Time in the United States. I do a live stream uh, and then you can hop on and ask me any question whatsoever. Um, but um, I want to try to make this video quick. I've made this video a few times. My last time I made it was over an hour or so. I'm going to try to crank it down in around 10 minutes, but we'll see. So uh, let's kind of get to it. Okay, so... Um, uh, let's talk about what is real money. So I'm going to talk about the three big ones, gold, fiat currency like the United States dollar and many other currencies out there. I'm not just talking about the United States dollar, but um, just a currency that's made by the government that's not backed by anything. Um, and then Bitcoin. So these are the three that everybody talks about. And I'm going to talk about the differences and the pros and cons between each one. So we're going to go over the, each one of these, which I believe what should make a real money um, and, uh, and, and what I look for when I'm looking to, uh, to put my money into something, right? Uh, so it needs to be fungible, interchangeable, right? Um, uh, same dollar as in my pocket, worth the same as yours. Uh, it needs to be non-consumable, meaning like can't uh, go bad and spoil. It needs to be portable, I need to be able to take it with me everywhere. Uh, durable, it needs to last, right? Um, uh, it needs to be highly divisible. Um, meaning uh, I should be able to buy, you know, very, very small items very, and uh, as well as very, very expensive items with it. It needs to be accepted everywhere. Everyone needs to accept it, right? Uh, I need to make sure it can't be counterfeited. I need to make sure it's really easy to transact with. We need to make sure that the money is scarce as well. Um, so it can't just get, uh, you know, it's not like it's a pile of dirt. It's now money that everyone can get and um, you're working for nothing, right? Uh, and then I believe as well it needs to be decentralized when you have a third party that completely controls the economy that you have no control over yourself. It, it, it just puts it into a not fun situation. And then it needs to be programmable. It needs to be smart, right? We're in the digital age. So uh, we need to be able to uh, make our money uh, be digital with that. So I'm going to go over each one of these things. And again, I'm going to try to go over uh, really quick with you. So first of all, fungible, right? Same dollar in my pocket needs to be the same dollar in yours. Very much so with gold. Gold, gram of gold, same as gram of gold in mine. Uh, cash, right? A dollar in your pocket's worth the same dollar in my pocket. Bitcoin, same thing. One Bitcoin in yours worth one Bitcoin in mine. So I gave it all the green um, happy face. Uh, so I did green for good. I did the yellow for needs improvement. And I did red unhappy faces for uh, bad. So it's my little ranking system. And I have a little chart at the end. Uh, this took me time to make. So hopefully it was worth it and you guys like it. So... Um, so yeah, it uh, needs to be non-consumable as well, right? So like for example, uh, oil, right? Uh, you can't use oil as currency because oil goes bad after, uh, um, uh, or gas, right? Um, depending on how it's held or, or, or whatnot, right? Um, so um, uh, gold, very much so. You can have gold for thousands of years and it still holds its properties. Uh, the dollar, you know, you wash that dollar a long time and it may end up going bad, but uh, pretty much, you know, it, it can sit there on the shelf as long as it's, uh, you know, in the right condition. It'll last, uh, you know, your whole life. So uh, Bitcoin, the same way. As long as you have access to the Internet, um, you're, the network's never going down. So your Bitcoin's always going to be there. So uh, I gave that all a green, happy face as well. So uh, now let's go into the little bit differences. Portability. 
right? Gold's going to be a little bit hard to uh, to uh, travel around with you, right? And I granted you can do gold, silver, and bit and and, uh, and you know, copper or something, pre different precious metals, but it's going to be really not so easy to carry around bags of gold. Um, cash, very easy. That's what we've been using, and it seems to work out pretty well. The only problem we have with this is if uh, you're trying to um, you know, carry around huge amounts of cash, but uh, you know, I've uh, I've held a hundred thousand dollars, and it, it was in a tiny little lunch bag, so you know, it doesn't take that much money. Um, and then Bitcoin, very portable, right? You don't even need to carry it with you. You can leave everything at home as long as you know your password. You can access your money anywhere to the internet. So I give gold a frowny face, uh, um, cash a happy, and then Bitcoin a happy face on that one. Uh, it being durable, we need to make sure that money is uh, can be used over and over and over. Um, gold, very, very durable, right? Um, like I said, it's been used for thousands of years. Uh, cash, uh, moderately, um, pretty durable though. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, after a while it can't, you know, it's paper, so it can kind of, you know, deteriorate after a long, many, many use cases. Uh, Bitcoin can be used thousands and thousands of times. It's always going to be um, good to go. So. Uh, I gave uh, gold happy, um, cash the mid grade, and then Bitcoin the happy face as well on that one. Um, being highly divisible, meaning um, you know you can buy a you know multi million dollar house as well as like a piece of gum or even something less than that. Uh, gold is not that highly divisible, right? Um, you can't really carry on gold and be you know chunking off little pieces of flex and weighing it and and whatnot, right? So. Um, uh, uh, cash pretty divisible. Um, that being said, uh, we're getting into an age where you're going to see a lot more micro transactions, right? So I think um, you will, uh, with when it comes to anything under a penny, you can't use um, dollars. So uh, we are, I, I mean, we are for sure going into a world with micro transactions, and, and it can't be done with the current uh, fiat system. Um, if you digitalize the dollar, eventually, yeah, but it's not digitalized yet. So, and then Bitcoin's very, very divisible. Um, you have, uh, you have, uh, you know, Bitcoins, then you have Satoshi's, the unit under Bitcoin, and you have a unit actually underneath that as well. So, <clears throat> you can do crazy small transactions with Bitcoin. Um, so yeah, gold's not so much. Cash needs improvement, right? With the micro transactions, then gold very, very much divisible. Um, it being accepted everywhere. Bitcoins, I mean, a gold can be accepted a lot. Most people accept gold as money. Um, they wouldn't say like, oh, my bank doesn't, I can't get gold from my bank or, you know. Um, gold's a really interesting thing because you mostly get gold from private parties. Um, you can get gold from the government as well, but um, but uh, it's just not used as a medium of exchange as much. Uh, but people kind of accept it as money. Uh, money very accepted. Everyone uses fiat currency, accepts it everywhere. Bitcoin, it's not accepted pretty much anywhere. Um, it will eventually, right? I believe it will. I'm hoping it will uh, gain adoption, right? But until it does, uh, it's not really. It has a big problem. So, yeah, gold's not so much. Uh, gold, uh, cash, very much so. Bitcoin could use improvement, um, and hopefully, in another, you know, by 2024, by the next halving or something, that will be uh, different. Authentic, meaning you can't be counterfeited. I don't really know the word to use, genuine maybe, um, but uh, but uh, you don't want to be able to replicate it and someone else to fake it, right? So you can't fake gold. No one's been able to create a, a, a prop, something that looked exactly like gold and that was able to be um, faked, right? You had fool's gold, but that faked people a long time ago. Um, cash, very much, right? It gets counterfeited all the time. Um, big problem. Uh, Bitcoin, you cannot fake a Bitcoin. If you have a Bitcoin, you for sure have one of the under 21 million coins that exist. So very, very authentic. So yeah, I put gold, good, um, cash can be counterfeited, right? Bitcoin's good. Um, secure, uh, and again, I didn't really know the, the word for this one to write as well, but you wanna make sure that you keep, you keep it safe. Um, not just from thieves, but from like the government as well, or from like a third party, like a bank or something. So like gold, for instance, it's pretty secure. If you if, if you hold it in like a safety deposit box and that bank goes under, you, you won't be able to access it, right? Because it's in a third party building. But if you have it stored with you, then yeah, it's pretty, pretty secure. Um, unless, you know, someone comes in your house and takes it, but uh, you can bury it somewhere, you know, but it's my, so yeah. Um, uh, cash. 
Uh, so it could be a sec little secure if you kept it under your mattress or in the safe at home or whatever, but the money has been made. You can't be mailing cash to like your, pay your gas bill and your electric bill and stuff. Uh, it's, it's being made to be more and more digital age, and so you pretty much have to have all your cash in a bank, which means the bank now has possession of it, which means they can, you know, they already take money out automatically without asking for like overdrafts or whatever the case is. Um, but uh, uh, but the IRS as well, they can just take that money. So Pursuit of Happiness, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. movie. If you haven't, it's a great movie. You should watch it. But, um, but yeah, it happens all the time. IRS just comes in, takes all of your money out of your account. Um, so uh, with money, it's kind of scary in that way. With Bitcoin, as long as you know your password and nobody else does, then no one will ever be able to touch that money. Not the creator of Bitcoin, not the most powerful people who are involved in Bitcoin. Nobody can. They can't hack into the Bitcoin network. It's never happened before. I mean, it could happen, but if it ever did, there's a way to fix it as well. So very, very secure. So on this one, I gave gold a middle, um, cash very bad, and then uh, Bitcoin a smile, gold, uh, green smiley face. Easily transactable. Gold, not so much easily transactable. Maybe back in the day it was a lot easier, but now it's not for sure. Um, cash, very easily transactable, right? We learned this in elementary school, um, uh, how to handle money, right? So. Um, uh, Bitcoin currently is not. So here's the deal with Bitcoin. It is so easy to use if you understand how everything works. Um, the problem with this is if you do the wrong thing, you could accidentally lose all of your money. And uh, with that in mind, that's I'm, I, I give it a, a red or a whatever, a, a yellow smiley guy. Um, because it can be easy, but uh, it just needs improvement. So until, like, for, like, example, the Internet, when the Internet came along, uh, no one really t gained adoption to it until AOL came along and made it really easy to use the Internet and made it fun, right? So until an AOL comes wrong, around for Bitcoin or a Netscape or a Google or something that does something really cool with it that make, gains mass adoption um, and makes it a lot easier to work with, then, yeah. Um, but, uh, and then scarce, right? Money shouldn't be crazy abundant, right? Um, gold is pretty uh, scarce, right? Now there might be some huge veins of gold we haven't found in the world yet. You can find a vein that's worth more, more gold than all the gold that's ever been mined. So, you know, um, there's a lot of like rainforest jungles that uh, I'm sure have some cool stuff underneath there, right? So who knows? Um, some places have just never been touched for thousands of years, right? So. Maybe the Canadian, I don't know if all that Canadian snow or something, but uh, uh, at any rate, uh, or an asteroid, we're going to be asteroid mining eventually, right? There could be an asteroid with gold on it or whatever, but it's pretty scarce um, um, currently. Uh, money, it's printed like out the wazoo. We just printed, we're printing $6 trillion this year. We printed over a trillion dollars last year. Um, we're a printing machine, uh, the United States says anyways, uh, many other currencies or countries are a lot worse. Um, you get like Argentina, they hyperinflate their in currency. Uh, so where like beginning of the year you lose, uh, hundreds of, you know, thousands of percent. In fact, uh, it was so bad in some of these countries where a cup of coffee was a dollar, uh, January 1st. And at the December 31st, that cup of coffee was 400 bucks. It hyperinflated that bad. They just keep adding, adding more money. So that's what we're doing right now. So money is going to become, um, less and less valuable. So $6 trillion when we were under $20 trillion in debt last year, um, very, very scary, right? Bitcoin, very scarce, little under 21 million, right? So um, uh, you, there's never going to be any more than that. So, uh, so yeah, um, I gave gold the middle, uh, cash very bad, and then uh, Bitcoin the best on that one. And then it being decentralized, money should be decentralized. You shouldn't, ha you should be able to have say on your money and should be able to, um, you should be able to have money that, uh, that you, you have more control over and isn't controlled by somebody else. So it should be just um, a money that can be used and done with anything. So gold is pretty decentralized. Um, the gov most of the governments own most of the gold right now. So there could be situations where gold prices and things can be manipulated. So um, with, with gold being owned by a select few and in, in the sense of it's not owned by billions, the masses, isn't distributed by you know hundreds of millions of people. Uh, the majority of the gold is held by you know a select few, probably a couple thousand, if if that, right? So, 
um, probably under a thousand people, maybe even under a hundred people. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, um, but yeah, um, fiat currency is made by the government, not decentralized at all. Government makes as much as they want. Uh, Bitcoin very much decentralized. There's no CEO. There's no board members. It's a piece of software um, that needs to have half the people running the network vote on stuff, right? And there's a million people on the network, so very much not decentralized. So on this one, I gave gold a middle, gave bit cash bad, and gave Bitcoin. Oh, you can't really see because I'm in the way. I gave Bitcoin a green. Um, it being smart. Um, I believe as well money should be smart and programmable. We're in the digital age, right? Um, you should be able to, for example, I should be able to make a bet on a sports team. My team's going to win. My friend says his sport team's going to win. We both put in $100 into this software program. Uh, my team loses, so the money automatically goes to my friend without me having to do anything, right? Um, what about in the future, for sure, when auto, uh, auto, autonomous driving is going to happen, you're going to see uh, people make a company where uh, if the car ever needs to uh, get new tires or oil change or whatever, it automatically does the appointments and all that stuff. And then when it makes enough money to buy a second car, it buys a second car. And you can have an Uber that's run by computers, run by software, it's run by people, you know, and have it be decentralized right you can't do that with pieces of paper you can't do that with gold you can only do that with something digital mm -hmm. and so it would take a bitcoin so you can't see but i put the bitcoin um yeah here's the green and the uh, the other two are the no not good so um here's the chart i made um and uh again these are my opinions um uh but uh but i believe this is pretty accurate uh, of what uh, it doesn't mean one green is better you know one each one of these isn't uh, evenly weighted so one doesn't mean it's exactly um, as meaningful as the next <clears throat> but uh, but yeah um, hopefully this all makes sense I really want to know what you guys think tell me in the comments down below what you think uh, about what I said if you agree or disagree with anything um, that I ended up getting brought up um, and, uh, and yeah, I'm just going to end the video with that. Hopefully it wasn't too long. Uh, I guess I just want to end with, if you've watched this long before, uh, all, if you're already still watching this, please leave a like uh, on this video. It really does help a lot. Um, any subscribe, share on this video, comment. It helps the YouTube algorithm, helps me um, get moved, shared along. And, um, and, uh, and this channel does go straight to charity. So every single like and sub absolutely goes a long way. And just remember, if you do have any questions, come on my live stream every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Um, Eastern, or sorry, Mountain Time in the United States uh, to ask me any questions whatsoever or just to chit chat. Um, and uh, eventually I will be doing um, live streams every single day. Um, my next step is to do them five days a week. So I'm going to be very, very available. So if you're new to this space, absolutely liking and subscribing isn't a bad idea. Put that bell notification on so you don't miss my live stream. So uh, I guess that's it. Super appreciate everybody. And, uh, um, and uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, see you in the next video. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye.